on today's show. We've reached the halfway mark of the season, so it's time for some NBA market analysis. Which team needs to make a move? Who's become an elite player? Which team is undervalued? That, plus we discuss Harden dropping Jamal Murray and the Spurs All-Star chances. It's Tuesday, January 8th. The starter starts now. to the starters presented by Jack Daniels old number seven and Tennessee honey I'm Jay Skeets alongside me as always Tass Mellis that's the Aussie Lee Ellis and over yonder well that's the bearded one that's Trey Kirby hey yo hey yo Trey what's up tonight well I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters and guys Giannis Antetokounmpo has already started his wrestling villain training because look at this dastardly movie pulled against the jazz last night grabbing onto Joe Ingles' leg as uh, the Bucks drive in for an easy basket. Maybe he's working on a submission move or something, yeah. but this is definite heel behavior, just grabbing onto a leg. Nonetheless, it brings us to today's question. What is the best NBA leg grab? There have been more than you think. The most famous, of course, is Jeff Van Gundy during the midst of a brawl between the Heat and Knicks, grabbing onto Alonzo Mourning's leg and just holding on for dear life. This is even crazier every time you see it, but there have been more. Like when Michael Beasley accidentally rubbed on Anthony Tolliver's leg rather than his own, and who can forget when Lee popularized the Mary Burrow leg lock in the wake of Matthew Dellavedova's leg lock and scandal. Lee was out here in the streets of Turner just going crazy grabbing legs. But we want to hear from you, so let us know on Twitter, what is the best NBA leg grab? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get those tweets in. On tonight's show, we're going to debate whether DeMar DeRozan and or LaMarcus Aldridge should make the all-star team. We'll talk to 3D live from Oakland. we got a very solid play. But first, guys, this week, most teams, basically all the teams, officially reached the halfway point of the NBA season having played 41 games, which means it's time for some new NBA market analysis in the starters Q2 quarterly report. Trey, you got your NBA portfolio ready to go. You need some more advice. We made you a lot of money last time. So what do you got for us here? Yeah, I'm up right now, but my financial advisors over at Wu-Tang Financial are always <laughs> telling me to diversify my bonds. But guys, which team needs diversification? Who needs to make a trade? Uh, the Detroit Pistons. They've got an incredible Blake Griffin. And they made that move last year. To see what he's doing this year, this is basically all they could ask for. Andre Drummond is also playing well, but they're four games under 500, even with all of that, as Blake you know, approaches 30 years old here. This is the best Blake you're going to get, really. Right. You want to get something out of Blake, you need some guard play around this guy and Andre Drummond. When you saw them be successful in Los Angeles with DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin, you had a Chris Paul. You, you really need a guy to create. Again, Blake is doing everything he can, but Reggie Jackson just isn't himself. Maybe it's injuries, but he hasn't been what they thought they were getting when mm -hmm. they signed him. If Smith out, you know, definitely hurts. And maybe they could do it by committee if Stanley Johnson was very good and Luke Kennard was very good. But they just don't have it. They need a guard to desperately help those guys. And they need it sooner rather than later because Blake might miss some time. There might, that still yeah. hasn't happened quite, uh, quite yet, although he's been extremely healthy to this point. He had a great offseason. It's just hard seeing Blake play this well after they made that big, big trade and not really getting anything to sort of help him out. Because he's got to be the ball handler. He's got to be the creator. He's yeah. got to be everything on and this that is a team. team in the Pistons that want to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's why they made that in trade. the Eastern Conference. That's why they made the Blake trade. They got the new arena. They're trying to get some excitement there, put people in those seats. It helps if you can make the playoffs. Even if you lose in the first round, get in there. Um, so you need a little help for Blake. That's a good one. I don't think they have the uh, assets, though, well, really. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can package a couple of those guys. But outside of them adding a pick or something in, I just don't really see how they can get anything back. Yeah, I, I think they would add a pick because yeah. of what they did last year. It's kind of a slippery slope. You have but to kind of go all in right yeah, now right. while you've got Blake. But uh, I'm actually going with the Houston Rockets now. I know they're flying right now, Yeah. but it's only January. And we know that the Rockets are playing not until April. They're expecting to be playing until June. Mm -hmm. So that's another 25 games or so by the end of the season. They've actually shored up themselves a little bit with the ball handling by getting Austin Rivers, who's been decent for them. I just think they probably need another sort of 3 and D guy, one of those guys that Daryl Morey likes to get who can play a little defense, knock down a three-pointer. Trading Michael Carter-Williams gave them a $1.5 million trade exception and a roster space. So I actually think they are going to make a move. It's just what they can get out there. But remember, 
Mike D'Antoni only likes to play eight or nine, eight or nine guys, but he's got to make sure that they get through this part of the season without any more injuries to any of their players. Chris Paul's out right now. Gordon's out right now. James Harden's been fantastic, but this is a heavy, heavy workload he's got right now. They need to manage his minutes a little bit down the stretch, I think, closer towards playoff time because he does have a history of kind of running out of gas a little yeah, bit in the playoffs. Absolutely. So I think the Rockets need to just look at this. What do you have in mind? Is there a name out there? Is it like a Wayne Ellington as a scorer, as a shooter? Maybe not so I mean, much defensively. He's is it? He's the sort of player I think they need. Yeah. Someone who, who they don't need necessarily to have the ball in their hand a whole lot, but he can do a lot at both ends for them. Because they've got when, when Chris Paul comes back and James Harden's there, they've got the guys who are going to keep the ball in their hand. They just need a guy who's going to go out there, work hard, knock down those threes, and do what the Rockets do, play their style, but also mop up a few minutes late in game. Can't have James Harden playing heavy, heavy minutes through January, February, March, and April, and expecting him to still be going strong in May or June. Trevor Ariza might be available. Well, he should be. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if... A, uh, he yeah. would definitely help. Uh, he he <laughs> is the sort of player... I just don't know, you know, what, what the Rockets would be prepared to give up to him given that he's a free agent, of course, at the end of this season. But remember, the Rockets are in a win now, right now. They've got those draft picks out there. Spend one if you have to to get a guy like Ariza. He's been there. He's a proven winner. He knows their system. Maybe that's the option. I'm going to go with the Phoenix Suns. I'm going to go with one of the worst teams in the league. They can make a move. They can make a trade. Get a guard. Get a point guard to pair with Devin Booker. I don't mind the experiment of trying to see if Booker's like a hardened type of guy and having him sort of run the offense, but he really shouldn't be doing that. He's a scorer. That's what he does. He gets buckets. He would be helped. It would help him out, his development, I think, with a good point guard, especially one that can play some great defense beside him. That's where he lacks. Terry Rozier's name was thrown around early in the season. It makes a lot of sense. If they could make a move and the, and the Celtics were really to part ways with him, because they got Marcus Smart locked up for four years, 52. They got Kyrie Irving as you know their star point guard. Rozier's been better when he started. I'd love to see him get that opportunity in the NBA. Now, they may just wait and try to sign the guy, and maybe that's in play here, but I hope it just happens at some point that Booker gets a good, solid, young point guard, because he fits their timeline, too. Mm. In terms of Aiton and Booker's age, he, Terry Rozier's not old. So I'd like to see that happen, or at least some sort of guard. But he's that, that insurance for when Kyrie goes down. He is the insurance, yeah. but that's going to be... You've got Smart and Kyrie once you're eventually locked up with him. I mean, mm. just, that's a lot of money for your backcourt. No, for sure it is, but if Kyrie does get injured and misses time, they know that Rosie is ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he was great when he starts, but yeah. he's not that great coming off the bench this year. All right, next one, Dre. The league's biggest names are well-established at this point, but which player has joined the ranks of the NBA's elite this season, guys? Give me your hottest blue chipper. Yeah, this is, this is tough. Hot. I mean, like a guy like Jokic, who's going to make probably his first All-Star game. You know, okay, we're all agreeing. He's already in that elite class. He's so been chipping blue. Yeah. yeah, let's go a little deeper. I will go with De'Aaron Fox. I think he's right in the mix. I think he's going to be a borderline uh, All-Star mm -hmm. this season already in his second year. But he's putting up 18 points per game, 7.5 assists per game, 3.5 boards, nearly two steals, shoots well from the floor, 47%, 37 from deep. That's nice. And he's got the Kings, the Kings. At 500, 40 games in here at 20 and 20, and he has taken over. If you've watched them, they're very entertaining. He at times just takes over fourth quarters. So he is joining. He is nudging that way into that blue chipper oh, yeah. elite sort of level, and he's very, very exciting. That's why I give he that. He is ballpark. He's really close. Yeah. The confidence he has in his jumper from year one to year two has been wild. He hasn't done it all by himself, though. Buddy Hield has been great. Run Buddy, yeah. He Look, has become an elite three-point shooter. Right now, he is third in makes, seventh in attempts, and second in percentage for those who have made 100 or more. That's great. He is fantastic. Super hot from the corners as well. That's his uh, sweet spot. He won't play in the All-Star game, but he will be there for the All-Star weekend in the three-point shootout. You're calling, Lock it in. He will be there for sure. He's a guy shown incremental improvement over yep. his four seasons, uh, three seasons in the uh, NBA. 4-3. I can't remember what he's in now, but because uh, <laughs> he got traded halfway it's through. It's not that two first. and it's not five, <laughs> yeah. so three or four is good. But uh, well, he got two years older this year. That's right. Yeah. 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 But uh, you know, it, a guy who really believes in his own shot as well. Now, remember that first season or half season in New Orleans? He could not shoot at all. He's really worked on it and become elite level. Yeah, a couple other blue trippers too, Trey. You got Pascal Siakam. You can throw him in the mix there. D'Angelo Russell, I think, too, gets some love. So what's the next question? Uh, investing is all about buying low and selling high and retiring early. I'm trying to pull a Jimmy Butler and get out of here by the time I'm 35, which is next month. So, guys, tell me which undervalued team stock is going to rise during the second half of the season. The Utah Jazz. I think it's time they turn the corner. They kind of do this annually anyways. Second half is when they yep. start going. And I, I, I just believe in Donovan Mitchell believing in his shot a little bit more, his mid-ranger. He can do that. He doesn't have to get to the bucket each and every time. I think they just start to believe in themselves since that Kyle Korver trade. 
most recently, and uh, their next 12 or 15 are at home. The schedule gets That easier. helps. Mm -hmm. I, I think everything is sort of just blending together on that team. It's just a rough start, uh, but, but I think they will be a playoff team undoubtedly by the end of the season. Okay, what do you got? Well, I'm actually going with the Boston Celtics because... Celtics? They're yeah, undervalued? Yeah, yeah, they're undervalued because right now they're fifth in the Eastern Conference because we all thought they were going to be one or two. Got off to a pretty slow start. Things have started to come together for them. And also, if you look at those teams above them, particularly Philadelphia, there may be a little bit of internal drama happening oh, come on. in, uh, in Philadelphia. Jimmy? And then, of course, you've got Orlando, uh, excuse me, Indiana, who have been very, very good, but maybe punching a little above their weight right now. I think the Celtics are a better overall team. After that sluggish start, they're starting to get it together. I think they've finished top four. All right, all undervalued teams, the Celtics. The Jazz, let's hear from you guys. Jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Help our man Trey out with his NBA portfolio with DQ2. When we come back, Q2 to 3D. Yeah, there he is. Uncle Splash joins us live from Oakland to set up a little players only doubleheader action. Looking sharp, 3D. Back to the show. NBA TV players only has moved to Tuesday. We got a doubleheader Wolves, Thunder, Knicks, Warriors. And to let us know what's going on with Knicks, Warriors, it's the man who grills even in January. It's 3D. Dennis got the grill, Daddy. See those grill marks? Uh. 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 See those grill marks? What's going on, 3D? Hey, what's up, guys? First time seeing you in the new year. Happy New Year! And question for you: Any good Christmas gifts? Yes, guys, you know I'm a gadget guy. I'm all with the iPhones and all that kind of stuff, iPads. So now I have a new security system at home where I can kind of spy on the family. <laughs> but one thing I didn't know, I'm obviously spying on myself. So coming home from work the other night on game time, I tripped over the step and almost <laughs> fell down. It records everything. Oh, so the family got a chance to laugh at me being clumsy coming home. So <laughs> great gadget gift. Oh, that's great stuff. All right. Uh, since you're Uncle Splash at Warrior Shoot Around, you got some one on one time with Steph. Uh, what'd you guys talk about? Well, we talked about shooting and him having the freedom to run freely, be with Iguodala, be with Draymond, or if it's KD. He doesn't have to be a traditional point guard. He can go out there and run freely. And then we talked about the other day where he got called for a traveling because all these guys are trying the James Harden, the James Harden, the James Harden, the James Harden, the James Harden. Let's take a look. So much is made about the new move is the step back, step, step to the side. Are we dancing? I mean... You got called for the walk the other night. We know James Harden has taken it to another level. Real quick, what is your take on this new move that everybody's doing now? That's part of the game of basketball where everything evolves. Um, we were all trying to you know, stretch the, our, our imagination a little bit. Right. I tried the move. It didn't work. Um, you know, James is a master at it. Uh, so in terms of just trying to you know, evolve our skill set and, and push the, uh, the limits a little bit, that's what we're doing. I'm going to have to work on it, though, I guess. Maybe he's just got to watch tape of you doing it. Because, yeah. Because you, hey, I didn't travel. I didn't hear the rest. <laughs> no whistle whatsoever. Look, look at yeah. Uh, we're we're yeah. watching you do it's it again moment. here. Oh, he's got the moves, 3D. <laughs> it's, your, it's like you're playing that dancing game, that dance dance, dance revolution. Dance revolution. Yeah. yeah stepping on those squares. Um, question about KD facing off against the Knicks. A lot of rumors about him going to New York this off season. What's your prognosis? Do you think he's leaving this off season? Uh, deep down inside, guys, I really don't think he's leaving. I understand New York, bigger market, but let's just think about it. Nike's already taken care of me. He has so many deals off the court that I think he's happy. And I think when you really look basketball-wise, why would he want to leave Steph? Why would he want to leave Clay? Why would he want to leave Draymond? And, yes, there was a squirmish early in the season. They moved on from that. So deep down inside, I think this team is going to continue to win. Yes, they're going through a little dry spell through this Kerr uh, era where they're not winning a lot of ball games. They're going to get Cousins back soon. He'll get back into the system. I think they'll get down the stretch and they'll start winning ball games. I think KD will stay. Yeah, it's very easy to forget that DeMarcus Cousins is also oh on the way. A crazy amount of talent there. Crazy amount of talent in those feet as well. 3D, thanks uh, for taking the time. See you tonight. Thanks, We're, guys. It's oh, not yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not hey. Hey. Step back on out. Hey. Step hey. on out. All right. Hey. Going to take a quicker break. When we come back, we'll talk hard. He dropped Jamal Murray last night, but was it worse than the time he took down Wesley Johnson. We'll debate that next. It's coming up at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. 3D joins us live from Oracle to preview Knicks Warriors Plus. In honor of Vince Carter playing in Toronto tonight, Brian Geltzeiler and I rank our top five Raptors of all time.
right after the starters and set before tip presented by Ford. Back with the starters, let's play a little what you got. You know how this works. TK, take it away. Call the ankle ambulance. Last night, James Harden dropped the Nuggets. Jamal Murray with a behind the back dribble, then drained a three as he was fouled. It was such a great move. It got people talking about Harden sitting Wes Johnson down for a talk in February of last year. Guys, what was the better Harden ankle breaker? Murray or Johnson? What you got? Mm. There you go. Murray was great. Yeah. But Wesley Johnson just had it all. It was a movie. Everybody stopped. On the bench, Wesley Johnson got up and had a chuckle. The, the entire arena was watching this one thing happen. This is the moment that we'll remember from James Harden's step back history, I think. Yeah. Jamal Murray's not so much. Well, Why? Because, he, because Jamal slipped? Because he bit. came up and, and played defense, I think. Yeah. This is just art. <laughs> uh, and this, that's, a, that's a painting. Haven't we seen it in a painting before? Yeah. Wesley Johnson on the floor. I, 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 it's, look, these are very close. And yeah, Jamal does definitely slip. His back left foot there goes down, maybe on a little wet patch. But a nice move from Harden. We had the double doink on Sunday in the, right. in the football game. This is double disrespect, though, because that, this is how it's different than Wesley Johnson. He got dropped, Jamal Murray, but he scrambled to get up. And then he also fouled James Harden. It was a four-point play. So mm. the double disrespect there where he falls, gets up, and still gets called for the foul, and then he goes and hits the free throw. Wow. Yeah, well, that's quadruple has... disrespect last year to just stand there and wait for the <laughs> guy to hang out. Wesley Johnson sort of pulled out, and he said, I'm not even going to get up and defend. At least Jamal got up and got back into the play, even yeah. though he made it worse. I actually <laughs> think, though, the, the, the move that dropped both guys, in this case, the Jamal Murray one was actually a sicker. It was a slicker move. It was. Than the one that dropped Wesley Johnson, I guess is what I'm getting at. And it helped Jamal was playing a little more aggressive defense. Mm. All that. It's tough. It's very tight. Trey, where do you go with this? Yes, very tight, very tight. But I think <laughs> it's got to be uh, the crossover yeah, okay. on Wesley Johnson. Like Tass said, that was quintuple disrespectful <laughs> by the time the five seconds have passed. But moving on, just like clockwork, the San Antonio Spurs are deep in the playoff mix at the halfway mark of the season. And they've also been the best offense in the league since the beginning of December. So how will they be rewarded in February? Who's getting an invite to Charlotte and making the All-Star team? DeRozan, Aldridge, or neither? What you got? DeRozan. And it's not going to be Aldrich. He's playing Why? great now. Why not? He couldn't hit a shot in the month of November. Yeah, but that's and, the and carrying them, them could. Who was carrying them during that time? Yeah. It was DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. And now that they're both playing well, they're rolling and they're, they're on this amazing run and have the best offense in the league since December 1st. DeRozan's going to make the All-Star game, though. I, th I really think he is because the Spurs have gotten, obviously, back into the playoff race here. You've got guys like Conley and the Grizzlies falling out a little bit. That helps them. You know, Chris Paul, obviously, he's out of it. He's injured. Clay's an interesting one, but I think DeRozan's a lock. When they struggled early on, and, and Aldridge struggled, now that he's rolling again and they're rolling, don't you say, well, maybe he is the more important player? No, but on that the, team. DeRozan is the MVP of the Spurs this season. Statistically, the they are just identical. It's very, very hard to split them. So it just comes down to which one do you think Positions is more important? Positions could come yeah. into play, I yeah. guess. Because, like, four locks for guards in the West, right? Curry, Harden, Westbrook, Lillard. And so you're going to have one or two more mm. then. And, and it's guys like Fox, uh, Clay. Yeah, well, I, th I think there's nine locks overall. You know, you mentioned yeah. four guards, LeBron, AD, Durant, Paul George, and Jokic. So yeah. there's going to be DeRozan amongst, you know, the Aldridge, Clay, Towns, Tobias, Doncic, Mitchell, who Ooh. I think will be sort of be in the DeRozan class after the Jazz pick it up a little bit. He'll, he'll be there, but I think DeRozan, they can't get two. I think DeRozan will be the one that they pick. I, I think so, too. I think yeah. it helps that he's made a bunch of all-star teams, well, too. So and I know it was he was an all-NBA. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. You yeah. Think, but you think Aldridge over DeRozan? Uh, I, I just don't think it's as clear-cut as what you're saying. Okay. I, I think Aldridge, he started off slow, the Spurs started off slow, but now he is rolling. DeRozan through. is like the Spurs' de facto point guard because they don't have a true point guard. All right, well, I'm I saying think. both, then. Okay, <laughs> interesting. All right, he's saying both. It sounds like Tash and I are leading towards a DeRozan. Trey, what is the answer to this one? Uh, I'm going DeRozan as well because mm. Lee really just folded on his case pretty <laughs> hard right there. I was with you up until the end. I'm going DeRozan. Moving on, though. Brooke Lopez hit another three threes last night, including a monster 30-footer that iced the win over the Jazz. He's now ninth in the league in total makes, ahead of guys like Chris Middleton, Bradley Beal, and Kyrie Irving. So maybe he'll be getting a February invite to guys. To Brooke Lopez, be in the three-point contest, yay or nay? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Why of wouldn't course. you want to see too Splash tall. Mountain in the three-point contest? He's too tall? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. you don't want to see him? Yeah, he can't reach down to the racks well enough. I, I, hey, long. look, I didn't say he was going to win it if he goes in it, because I don't think that's going to happen. But 70% of Brooke Lopez's shots this season are from three-point range. Yeah. This is, I know, like, we've talked about it a little bit, but it is wild that a guy who hit three, Three three-pointers through his first eight seasons 
has now hit 347 threes over the last two and a half seasons and a whole bunch this year. And, and is obviously an important piece for the Bucs, too, and really opened things up. Of but course we want him in. He's it. acting like a three-point shooter yeah, as well. He's yeah, and He's doing and... step backs, he's getting to the corner, he's running down. He is perfect for the three-point shootout because he might add a little bit of spice to it as well. Right. So a little, a little get him in there. Flair. Okay, we're all yeah. up on this one. Trey, you're the tallest guy here. You should want the tall guy. Yeah, in. you guys never let me go in the three-point contest. <laughs> the All-Star Weekend Lee does 20 takes, but yeah, let's put him yeah. in there. You know, that's how tall guys shoot. Maybe me too. Just Come kidding. on in, bro. No, you remember the time I did it off camera. I made like three. Well, <laughs> maybe you'll be like Brooke Lopez, man. You've worked on it. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> we come Just back. been waiting. A very solid play. Welcome back to the starters. We asked you, what's the best NBA leg grab? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got a few of the best answers. Yeah, some very good answers. This one from Jobber, who says, had to be when Carl Malone and Dennis Rodman decided to use the NBA Finals to promote their WCW match. That was a wild <laughs> tangle up. Mackie says, Ooh. does Steven Adams oh, grabbing oh. Draymond Green count? If no. so, then that may be a little bit different. And Sam says, Shaq oh, versus yeah. the monitor. Monitor one, Shaq zero. Good, good tweets. Good answers. Tomorrow it's Wednesday. We've got your Pick'em payoff. Trey lost the month of December. He was last place in our Pick'em battle, so he will be paying it off. Got something fun in store. So tune in tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, for that. Uh, tonight's pick, though, as we see Lee nearly fall over on his roller skates, it's the Nuggets Heat. Whoa! Wee. And Tess is the only one taking Denver. I'm scared. On the road, everybody else has the scared. heat. Well, you and I are not doing great this, but off to a rough start. All right, Lili, very solid play. Yeah, going to Sacramento here for a beautiful boomerang from uh, Bielitsa. This one uh, it takes a little time to get going, but once it does, the ball starts fizzing around. There's a bounce pass there. We've already had a little pump fake party, and then it ends back where it started. Ooh. Beautiful Ooh. finish. That's what I call a very solid play. Nice. You know what's beautiful? Two wedges in one wow. night of yeah. basketball. Wild. Number 18 was Gerald Green. He was feeling it. Oh, yeah. An off balance three there. Sticks it. Number 19 on the season, the old rebound putback oh, wedgie. Nice. Costa Kufos and Mo Bamba having some fun underneath there. We're on pace for about 42 wedgies. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Drop podcasts. We recorded one earlier today. It's up. You can download, listen to it. We talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Stepped on the beach, top five. Had a blast. Um, before we go, Trey, Brooke Lopez, we want him in the three-point contest. You're our big guy. Why don't you see if you can splash a three on our little mini net here? This is the most pressure of my life. Come on. Oh, oh, oh that's a tough not shot. bad. Race that's the night. That's like a four-point line. That was deep. <laughs> <laughs>